Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Exotic Astrology and today we are going to discuss on Bhavad Bhavam which is very famously known as house to house which means fourth from the fourth, third from third, second from second, tenth from tenth. All right, it's a very interesting concept in astrology and it can give us many clues about how to read and horos uh, any horoscope and how to read uh, each and every house of the horoscope okay and how to understand which houses are actually the arudhas of which house because that's what arudha is arudha is the reflection all right and many people have been asking if i will make videos on arudha lagna and upapada lagna so yes they will be coming very soon hopefully and today's topic is Bhavad Bhavam and this is also very important because we can get a lot of knowledge about the dashas also which we are running okay and as I always say and all the classics of astrology also say whatever happens in our life is governed by the dashas and not by transits okay transits are used to time events and dashas are the ones that decide what is going to happen in our life and once we know the dashas then we can use transits over that okay so if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you like this video click the thumbs up at the end and if you want a consultation from me regarding any area of your life then you can go down to the description section down below of my videos where you will find the link to my website to book a reading with me and yes, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. All right. So what's Bhavad Bhavam? Bhava means the house. Okay. Like in Hindi or Sanskrit, we say Tisra Bhav, Chautha Bhav, Pachwa Bhav. It means third house, fourth house, fifth house. Okay. So every house represents a particular area of our life. We know that. But what does Bhavad Bhavam means? So it means the Arudha, which means you take any house, the second house. So which is the Bhavad Bhavam of the second house? It is the second from the second. And when I say second house, it means from our ascendant. Okay. So from our ascendant, whichever is the second house, Arudha of that house is the third house because the second from the second is the third. Okay. So whenever in astrology, we say fourth we count the that house where we are and from there we count okay so suppose i say fourth from the first house it does not mean the fifth house so many times people think that okay third from uh, the third will be three plus three six no that's not six it is five because when you say third you mean the third house then another house then another house okay so three houses from the third including the third so similarly, Bhavad Bhavam means the same amount of houses from that house. So the Bhavad Bhavam of the 10th house is the 7th house. Because when you go 10 houses from the 10th house, you land up in the 7th house. Okay, The Bhavad Bhavam of the 5th is the 9th. The 9th is the 5th. And the Bhavad Bhavam of the 12th house is the 11th house. Okay. So this is a very interesting concept in astrology. So now how, how to understand this? What Bhavad Bhavam is basically? Bhavad Bhavam basically is the place where there is a tangible manifestation of your activities, which that house denotes. Okay. So let's take the example of the fifth house. And... The fifth house from the Lagna, if you want Bhavad Bhavam, then fifth from the fifth, which is the ninth house. And similarly for the ninth is the fifth. So what, what does this mean? It means that when we want to see tangible external manifestations of something, then we look to the Bhavad Bhavam of that house. Okay. Now, why is that? Because that's the reflection. Wherever the reflection is happening, because that's like where we can perceive the energy coming from okay so that is why they say fifth house is the most important house in the horoscope why 
because it is the bhavad bhavam of the ninth house nine houses from the nine ninth house will land you in the fifth house fifth house is where you find absorption in spirituality okay ninth house is the house where spirituality begins and the culmination the reflection of spirituality is coming from the fifth house because that's the house of love you see and if you see the arudha of the fifth house it is the reflection of love so that that goes to the ninth house which means that is the highest place where we can find love which is the ninth house and that is why these two houses are very complementary now the lagna the ascendant does not uh, have any other house as the bhavad bhavam because the first from the first is the first itself okay now well, because there is no reflection of our body okay our body is we <laughs> and therefore we need to understand that when we use these uh, concepts especially of particular houses of bhavad bhavam then we need to understand how do they actually function okay so for example suppose somebody's fourth lord goes to the seventh house okay so this means the lord of that house is sitting in the bhavad bhavam of its own house okay because fourth from the fourth is the seventh and the fourth lord is in the seventh house okay so this means that unless there is a tangible manifestation of the fourth house the person's fourth house will not function properly okay and similarly for any house you can take which means so what's the bhavad bhavam of the seventh house seventh from the seventh is the lagna <laughs> so when when do you uh, what's the uh, arudha of the seventh house which means what is the reflection of the seventh house because that's you because if you are only not there then how how will the seventh house function because then who will your spouse marry yes your spouse will marry you right ultimately so if you your body your first house that is only not there who is your spouse marrying <laughs> okay and let's take the uh, bhavan bhava of the 10th house so what's the bhavan bhava of the 10th house is the seventh because it's the 10th from the 10th so what does this mean this means that the external manifestation see what is the 10th house 10th house is the house of status yes but status who who status it's the status of the lagna but then the question is uh, what is status basically people say oh he has a good status she has a good status status where in the society that's the seventh house imagine a world where you are the only person living and then you are the president of that country or you are the prime minister or you are you are the dictator or you are the chief minister or whoever you are imagine you 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 are all the houses there you are the fifth house you are the ninth house you are the tenth house but, but that that fame does not have an external manifestation so it is as good as if the fame is not existing because there is nobody to come and congratulate you there is nobody to come and tell you that yes my dear sir my dear madam you have done a great job okay so if that is only not there that is why you will always see that whenever you have some big success in life whichever area it is it can be your professional or personal or any area of your life unless people come and congratulate you you will not feel that you have had some success in life and what i am saying here may sound a bit controversial it may feel as if i am telling that oh we are you know dependent on others for our uh, for our success or for the recognition of our success well that's unfortunately uh, or i would say not not say unfortunately i would say that's the way it is okay so imagine you got the first prize in a in a drawing competition imagine okay and then imagine you just you, you you just get the prize nobody comes and sees you and you were like okay and then nobody congratulates you how will you feel not very good right now yeah of course if somebody is very uh, elevated spiritually and uh, they are very much connected to god and divinity then they know that uh, god is always there with me <laughs> 
okay so then uh, these things will not matter but for the general public for most of the people for 99.9% .9 of the people that is how they perceive success success and that is why uh, nowadays you know everybody will put every uh, small update in social media also now there's nothing wrong with that but i'm trying to explain how the principle of bhavad bhava works okay if libra which is the original seventh house which means other people they do not recognize your success your success is of no value because it is not actually a success then it is not reflecting the aruda is not forming okay now of course this can go to some other extremes also that if the uh, 10th floor is in 7th or it's badly placed debilitated in the 7th then it could happen sometimes you know, that we are running too much behind yes so this is how you use the concept of bhavad bhava okay so now you know how to use this so if you see that a planet is sitting in the bhavad bhava of its own house okay then you must tell that person that my dear sir if the dasha of that that planet is running okay so for example suppose somebody's uh, second lord is in the third then second from the second is the third house so second lord is sitting in its bhavad bhavam so then you have to tell the person that suppose that person is a virgo virgo rising okay so then venus is the second lord and now venus is sitting in the sign of scorpio so then you have to tell the person that your matters of your second house are very much related to the external manifestation okay otherwise the second house will not function or other than saying it will not function i would say that uh, he will not feel as if the second house is getting activated he will feel as if there is something wrong you know I and mean, there's a problem there okay so similarly you can take for any house okay you can take the eighth house the arudha of the eighth house is the third house okay and what 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 actually the eighth house is basically eighth house is where you try to control yourself okay and what is the third house third house is the house of uh, as they say na it's maithuna bhava means sexuality okay or rather the the not so good side of sexuality it's like having sex with anybody anywhere anytime it's like that okay i'm not talking of the seventh house which is the house of marriage and with one person i'm not talking of that this time is the third house okay so so that that is where unless the temptation comes the test is not there you see so whenever the third house is getting activated the eighth house also gets activated okay so when you get a desire to enjoy with somebody then your control is tested how much self controlled are you how much can you restrain yourself or are you just going in the flow and just giving into it okay and this is not from some moralistic or religious sense this is some basic common sense okay so like that if any planet is sitting in the bhavad bhavam of any house then we can know that the person is too much focused on the externals okay which means the person wants to uh, feel an active sense of recognition about that planet in a way that is visible to others okay and this happens at its peak when the 10th house is involved because the arud of the 10th house directly falls in the 7th house okay and there are many uh, ways you can understand this of course and one of the ways as i said in dashas you can use this principle okay so for example if somebody has a planet who is sitting in the which is sitting in the bhavad bhavam of its own house now that is also very interesting suppose uh, somebody uh, like as i said for this virgo rising okay so for virgo rising if suppose uh, the second lord is in the third house okay so then the second lord venus is in the bhavad bhavam from itself but uh, for taurus wherever taurus is from there it may not be uh, in a good position so now for example here scorpio is the seventh house from taurus okay 
So now for Libra it is Bhavadharam, but for Taurus it is not. For Taurus it is exactly seven houses apart. Okay. So then the dynamics come into play that okay um, for Libra for the second house it is important that Bhavadharam is there, which is there in this case, and for Taurus then the story changes. Okay, then for the ninth lord, which is a Venus in case of Virgo rising, ninth lord is going and sitting in the third house. So it's like directly seven houses apart. Okay, so that will have a different flavor, that will have a different dynamics. Okay, and this you can use in your dashas also. Okay, so for example, uh, just don't say that the second lord is in the third, so the Bhavad Bhavam is like this for Venus. Don't say for Venus. It's for the second house, not for Venus, okay? Because Venus rules two houses. So your analysis about Venus has to include two points that from Libra, from its Multricorn sign, it is in the, uh, from the second house, it is in Bhavad Bhavam, okay? And from the ninth house perspective, it is not in Bhavad Bhavam. It is, it is in the seventh house. So that will have a different analysis. So, uh, just don't blindly say, oh, Venus is in Bhavad Bhavam. Okay. Second Lord is in the Bhavad Bhavam, not Venus. Okay. And this you can use for conjunctions also. So suppose somebody's fourth Lord is in the seventh. Conjunct the, four, the, the, the seventh Lord. Then the Bhavad Bhavam is even more stronger. Okay. Or suppose the fourth Lord is in the tenth, uh, so, sorry, is in the seventh. Conjunct the 10th Lord. Oh my God. Two Lords, the, their, their Bhavad Bhavam is the same. Okay. So the Bhavad Bhavam of the Lagna is the Lagna. And the 7th house is also Lagna. Okay. Because 7 from 7 is the Lagna. So if there is a axis which is the most turbulent in this world, it is the 1 7 axis. And when I say turbulent, it uh, I don't mean in terms of marriage or money or any area like that. I mean in a general sense for anything in life because whichever planets are sitting in the first and the seventh will impact all the Kendras. Why? Because if a planet is in Lagna, it will be in the Lagna, then aspect the seventh because every planet aspects the seventh and vice versa. If it is in seventh, it is in seventh and aspects the Lagna. But now, if the planet is in seventh, so then what will happen? It is sitting in the Bhavad Bhavam of the fourth and the tenth. Okay. So that means, suppose anybody has some a certain planet in the seventh house, then when that gets activated, then the fourth house and the tenth house, the physical manifestation also gets activated. Okay. Now that's very tricky that how without the activation of a house the Aruda is getting activated that's a very tricky part okay and that will depend on which sign that planet is in the seventh house and is it exalted debilitated or conjunct and what is the nature of the planet what is the lordship of that planet okay so this is how you can know so similarly now you know if there's a planet in the third house it is sitting in the Aruda of the second house okay and third house is also the Aruda of the eighth house so that means a planet sitting in the third house has the power to activate the second and the eighth because now forget the house the Aruda is becoming active it's like what you ultimately want is in front of you okay so for, for example seventh house you know uh, seventh house is the 10 from the 10. So seventh house is getting active. So what you ultimately want from your 10th house is already getting active. So that is why they say if the seventh house gets active, then there's a very high chance that a person uh, gets a promotion or the person purchases property because the seventh house is also the Arudha of these two houses. Okay. So it's a very interesting concept of Bhavad Bhavam and uh, we need to use this properly and not just say, you know, your uh, the third Lord is in the fifth house, you know, you, your third Lord is in Bhavad Bhavam. Okay.
so every house has a bhavad bhavam okay even though the lagna does not have but lagna itself is the bhavad bhavam of the lagna and i will make specific videos for every house like for example i said regarding the fourth and the tenth why the bhavad bhavam is the seventh house and similarly you can do this i also told for the five nine axis okay and finally that's what is the concept of bhavad bhavam i will make for every house okay so uh, what what about the third from the third why is why is the fifth house the bhavad bhavam of the third house okay so i'll make that some other time later hopefully <laughs> if time permits okay and if you are interested to know about your bhavad bhavam of any of your house or house lord or any planet or any other area then uh, you can go down to my uh, website which you will find down in the description section of my videos to get a reading with me and yes if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with somebody who wants to know about bhavad bhavam and if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and that is all god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him okay thank you very much